Hi everyone, it's Jen from Creative Housewives. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a Santa hat banner using your Cricut machine. I'm here on my canvas, I have nothing on it yet, so I'm gonna come over here to images, and then I'm going to, you can see I've already been looking, in my search bar I'm gonna type in Santa hat, which I've already done. So as you can see, there are a lot of different Santa hat options. For my project, because it's going to be like a flat banner piece, I need it to have a background where all the pieces come together. So some of these, as cute as they are, like these ones here, you can see they have a gap between the two pieces. That would make it a little bit difficult to turn into a banner. So I'm just gonna scroll down. I know that there's one in here. It's this one right here. So we'll go ahead and click on this and I wanna show you a couple things that I'm going to do here. So down here you can see that there is a draw layer on this. I don't need to have it draw on my image itself or on any of my paper pieces. So I'm gonna just take this section of the project and delete it. I don't need to have that on there. So I'm just gonna click on that and then select delete. And then I'm going to take my gray layer and I'm gonna change that to black just so it looks like how I'm going to put it together on my project. And now I wanna resize it. Because I'm using this in a collection of banners, hopefully you've seen those other projects that we've done, I know that I want it to be between three and four inches. My cute little Santa faces were four inches tall. My ho ho ho's were three inches tall. So this one, I think I'm gonna, let's go ahead and put the height at three inches and see what that does for the width. All right, that puts our width at just under five inches. So, I'm gonna think about that for a second because I don't, I, I know that I can easily, you know, tilt it like this, then it'll be more up and down than it will sideways, then it will be sideways. So I think that that sizing is actually pretty good and we'll go ahead and leave that there. Funny how like when you rotate it, you know, it shows you that your width and your height are different even though the size of the image itself hasn't changed just because of how it's cutting it. All right, but then I did just accidentally change it there. Okay, all right, we've got it set. So I'm using a Cricut Explore Air 2. So I am going to just go ahead. You can see here I've got Explore selected. All of my layers are ready to cut in the different colors. We'll go ahead and select Make It. And now I'm going to go ahead and cut out 10 of these. So up here where it says Project Copies, instead of duplicating on the canvas sheet, on the canvas screen, I can just do this here. So I only have to have one. I don't have to have the whole canvas cluttered up. So I can type in 10. I can just go ahead and hit apply. You can see it's put all of these here. This is one thing I was actually just talking with Paula about and said like, I understand that they have this grouped, but it doesn't really make sense to me why when these are all gonna have to be pieced and layered on like on their own that there isn't a way that I can move these individual things around to make them take up less room on the sheet. But for today, it's gonna be fine. So I have one white sheet, two black sheets of the background, and then one red. So for the red, I'll be using the glitter cardstock like we did on the other fun projects. So let's go ahead and get cutting. I'm gonna go select continue. It's going to find my machine, and then we can select our material selected and now I can choose my base material because I've been making banners I've got medium cardstock and glitter cardstock as my two favorites here for my explore air 2 now remember you can on your dial turn it to wherever you want it to be for your material and then this will come up and tell you what your dial is set to so it says select a material below or adjust a dial I, I told you this before because I use my maker all the time, I just keep my Air 2 turned to custom because this is the menu that I use for my maker and then that way I don't have to worry about accidentally forgetting to change the dial. So let's go ahead and select medium cardstock. I know that my pressure at default is great for the cardstock that I'm using. Then I'm gonna load my material into the machine. I have a fine point blade there. And then once the machine is loaded or the material is loaded in the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and select fast mode so that I can cut this out even a little bit faster. Let's get started. All right, I have my mat loaded with my white cardstock. I'm going to go ahead and hit the flashing C on my machine and that'll get it cutting. And while I'm waiting for that, I can grab my more to that point. My green standard grip mat. 
and preload on my glitter cardstock. So I wanted to show you really quick, when I'm loading things like glitter cardstock or anything that is a little bit thicker, one of the things I like to do, A, I mean, this doesn't get a ton of glitter on you. It's on there pretty well. You can see a little bit, but I like to just push it down and then you can, oops, drop that. You can grab a brayer and just use that. That will help make sure that it's stuck down really well all the way across the mat so that you don't have a problem with it catching an edge or something like that and um, and tearing your cardstock. So this is doing pretty good. I love fast mode. This is about halfway done already, which is nice. And then we'll be able to change that out and then get our black cutting for our the back of our Santa hats. All right, we're finished cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload this mat. I'm going to jump, actually, we'll just go ahead and load this one. And then here on my computer, I will change over to using glitter cardstock once it decides to find my machine again. All right, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to select my material. I'm going to change over to glitter cardstock. I've tested this before, so I know that the default pressure is great and fast mode is on. So we can go ahead and press our flashing C on the machine, get that cutting. And while that's cutting, I'm going to show you my favorite way to remove paper or cardstock from your Cricut mat. You don't want it to curl. So if I were to just grab the corner of my paper and peel this off, you can see it works. And since this is the outside of my paper or my image, it's not a big deal. But do you see how curled up that is? That's not going to be very great for the actual project itself. So what I like to do so that the images that I've cut don't curl is I like to just roll my mat a little bit and then slowly peel that off. The other option is you can just take your mat, flip it upside down and slowly peel your mat off your image this way. So by taking the mat off the cut, the cut paper, it's not curled at all. You can see it's nice and flat. That way I don't have to worry about trying to roll it back the other direction so that it gets rid of curve or curl or anything like that. So I've got these pieces. These are the background pieces. So I can lay these all out. And then once this finishes cutting, we'll be able to unload that, take the cardstock off of that mat, and then we can get assembling. So we'll be right back once this is finished cutting. All right, we finished cutting. I forgot to tell you before that when using glitter cardstock, I like to use the standard grip mat. That's the green mat that comes with your machine. So we're gonna go ahead and move these out of the way and just remove this. Now remember your cardstock or your glitter cardstock is a little bit thicker. And can I get a raised hand for everyone who is trying to do things with kids at home right now? It's Friday. Kids here don't have school today. They are being so good, but every once in a while, little two-year-old Pippa has something that she wants to share with the world. All right, we've got these almost all the way done. And then I'm gonna show you, we're gonna try out a new adhesive today that we've heard good things about. I told you before, my favorite adhesive for using with paper crafting is Art Glitter Glue. We get a lot of questions about that. The Art Glitter Glue does not have glitter. Art Glitter is the name of the brand, but they don't sell it locally anywhere and it's hard to get them to ship it during the winter because it can freeze and cause problems. So I'm trying this new one. I've heard good things about it. It's called Zip Dry. It's a paper glue. This is what I was paying attention to. It says it dries fast and clear and it never wrinkles paper. That's a pretty important thing when you know you're gonna have to be using a bit of it, um, especially for paper crafting, because nothing is more frustrating than when you're trying to do a project and then you get that weird wrinkling. I also liked that it has a little bit more of a precision tip. So we're just gonna pop that open, twist this one on. Actually, I think we have to... Okay, I think if we twist this on, it's gonna seal it. It's got a little like cap thing in there. So we'll seal it and then twist it off. Okay, I'm gonna have to get creative here. Where's my pin that I was using for my other banner? See, it's got this like little, so make sure you get that out or you're gonna get frustrated when you're trying 
too. And it probably says that on the directions. Remove cap. No, it just says to remove the cap and snip the tip off. So that was in there. I'm assuming it's on all of them, but maybe it's not. And then I'm just gonna cut the very end of this off because I want it to be pretty fine. And that just flew that direction. <laughs> okay, so we've got our, so this is our back piece. This, so remember, you could see the shadow of the black or the black outline on the whole thing. So it's not going to sit exactly perfect, like all right up against each other. I think it goes that way. This comes down a little bit. And then we've got the cute little end there that goes in. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue. And then I did learn with the art little glitter glue that a little goes a long way. So I'm not going to go crazy because I don't want it to spread out through the entire edge. So we'll get that put down in place. It says, so we'll, we'll be checking it. It says it dries clear. You can see that I got a little heavy handed here. You can see that. So we'll be testing that to see if it dries as clear as... I'm hoping it will, especially on black. That can be frustrating sometimes because it can leave a mark. Now, get it on that. This is a little bit nicer than using a glue gun or even a tape runner. I, I like for this, a tape runner would probably be fine, but I like using these types of adhesive because I don't have to worry about it like running you know, over the edges or anything like that. So we have our first little hat assembled. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the last nine and then I will show you how I'm going to string it on the banner so it can go with the rest of these ones. We'll be back. I have all of my cute little Santa hats assembled. I wanted to show you since this is the first time I am using this glue. So remember that one that had the glue kind of spill over a little bit or maybe I just moved it. You can kind of maybe slightly see right there. I'm not even sure if it's gonna show up on camera, but it's just, it looks a little bit shiny where the cardstock itself is a little bit matte. It looks a little bit shiny. Nothing that I think is going to be noticeable at all. And it didn't get gunky anywhere. Like it didn't clump up. It spread out pretty well and they're all nice and dry already. So it dried really nice and quick, like it said it was going to. All right, so what I want to do with these is I have 10 of the Santa faces, I have 10 Santa hats. So what I wanna do is I wanna have the Santa hats kind of sit in between the Santa faces. So in my very specific measuring, I was like, okay, you know, obviously I did, this is more than a hand, a little less, about a hand. So I'm gonna keep it about a hand's width apart and I want them to be just at a little bit of an angle like this. So just like we did on the last banner, I'm going to maybe unstick my cards, cardboard. I'm still waiting for some tips on your favorite, um, like I think like a silicone mat or something would work to be able to lay it on and not have it stick to it. So I'm going to do this at an angle. I'm just gonna apply a little bit of glue and then lay my twine through it. So we'll have that like that. Then I'm just gonna spread it out about, like not a spread out hands worth, but about a hands worth. And then we'll move the next one, try to make sure that we're getting it at about that same angle. And now I'm just gonna go along and do all 10 of these and then I will hang up my banner here with the other one so you can see how all three of them look together. I'm super excited about it. Okay, I'll be right back. 
All right, our last banner is done and it looks so cute with our other two banners. The hats went on great. I'm just gonna show you the back. I just ran the glue along the back and then stuck the um, twine into it. Now, if you were watching, if you've seen all of these, you already know that when it came to the Santa faces, I cut out a second back, like of the background of his face to be able to sandwich the string between. You could do that for all of these. You could cut out a second black backing and then just have that on there to give it a nice finished look. I may go back and do all of that, but I just wanted to show you how it looked all together. I love the three dimension of the ho-ho-hos. I love the glitter on all of them. I do think at home I have a red and white, just cute felt garland, felt ball garland. So I do think that I might see how that looks if I add it maybe between these two layers or maybe mix things up and hang. Let's see if I can show you the ho-ho-hos. Oh, I might do that between the two layers. I think that looks really cute. So you can do whatever you want with them. I hope you've had fun following along with our projects. If you have questions, leave them in the comments. We will come back and answer them. Don't forget to follow us so that way you'll know when we share a new video teaching you how to make a new craft using your Cricut machine. But sometimes we'll do crafts without our Cricut machine. If you have a project that you'd love to see us make so that you know how to do it, you can leave that in the comments too. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.